אוקיי, okay, אוקיי, okay. hello, 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 hello. אוקיי, so we're going to start, we're going to do a little bit of a, a thing on Figma, just like following some cool uh, 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 I'm just waiting for people to arrive. Hola, hola to everyone. Hey, there's some people here. Okay. Hola. Let's put some people here. Like, uh, hola to everyone. Look, Minerva. Tell us, uh, where are you visiting us from? By the way, can you hear me? Is this thing working? Hola, 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 hola. Hola, 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 hola. No, seriously, can you hear me? I'm here. It's just that I'm, I'm just by myself, so it's, it's hard to know if I'm actually connected. Uh, uh, uh. Hola. Hi. Yes. So the sound, is, is it working? Working 100%. Thank you so much for confirming. Uh, today, it's going to be a chill day. It's been one of those days where, um, by the way, Uh, look at look at this place. Angie, say hi. <laughs> Angie is helping me here. Uh, just like uh, this is a new place. As you can see, there's nothing in the background. Uh, there's all I need is, is like I just need internet connection, which I got yesterday, and a table and a chair. But I don't have a chair. I'm actually sitting on this. On this and then on top of it, I got this thing. <laughs> so, uh, as you can see, it's very lo-fi. We're going to keep it chill. We're going to keep it real. We're going to keep it real, man. Okay. So, hey, from Taiwan, from Bangladesh. Hey, Pablo. Oh, people from Bangladesh and from Taiwan. Dude, that is so cool. Nick, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Joaquin. Uh, but uh, yeah, as you can see, uh, it's, uh, it's I'm a little bit all over the place, but I know that you guys are patient with me and you, you like, oh, how pro is this? I just added this so you don't get the, is that pop filter, supposedly so the pop of the P and the Bs don't sound so bad. So uh, I'm going to, yo. I'm going to close all the screens that I don't want you to look at because I'm embarrassed <laughs> before I share my screen, okay? So you'll be more prepared for this. Uh, as you can see, I'm not. I'm one of those people that just like wings it. Let's go. Let's go live. F it, you know? That's me. Uh, so let me share my screen. Today, okay, everyone who's here, ASMR with Pablo. Uh, everyone who is here, thank you so much. Uh, as, as you can hear, I don't know if you can hear in the background, uh, Angie is helping here, uh, just like cleaning and she's, because we've been doing construction work and it's been just uh, one of those things that you're like, oh dude, a couple of days, it's gonna be ready. Eh, it's been months, uh, but I think uh, we're gonna get to, to like, the, gonna put books we're gonna put like I don't know like desks and and fun stuff uh, just because I, I, I usually whenever uh, uh, I go to a new place or whatever I just need it to be a creative place I want it to be a place for uh, a place for creation you know that it just inspires you and just like puts you in the mood to start like doing stuff is it music is it writing is it just Whatever it is, wow, I'm getting burned. Wow. Anyway, let's get started. I'm going to share my screen. And um, ba -ba, invite guests, share screen. There you go. Let's share the entire screen. I'm going to share my entire screen. And I'm going to put it here. And uh, I'm going to be sharing uh, a little bit about design principles. I don't know if you can see this. Hopefully you can. We're going to be doing it on Figma, just like uh, 
let me, you can see it, yeah. Uh, we're going to be doing design principles and this, different design principles like Tesla's law, Hicks law, Jacob's law, Fitz law. Maybe you have seen it as UX laws. There's a really cool website out there that explains all of this stuff. But um, I want it to be more practical, just like a, how how some of these uh, laws uh, appear in real life. You know, so we're going to go through some of the some examples and also some uh, just like a, we're going to redo some stuff here where we follow those principles. So let's start with Te Tesla's law, which is, uh, uh, with, uh, 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 thank you for the Together team. John Luke put this together. He He's a designer and uh, he helped me with uh, uh, parts of the presentation. So kudos to the uh, Together team who, who helped me with this presentation. So Te Tesla's law, which is the law of con conservation of complexity. The law of conservation of complexity. That's just uh, a lot of stuff, right? <laughs> to process in your head. But what it tells you is that there's just a moment when uh, complexity, it, we usually hear like, you you got to keep it simple. Just keep it simple as possible. But there's a level of complexity you want to keep. There's a level of complexity you want to keep on the user side because they you want to still give them control. You still want to give them the ability to change things or do certain stuff. That's actually like, I want to think that that's why they put uh, this MIDI controller. Uh, that was created by AI, by the way. It's so cool, right? Uh, <laughs> I, I, want to, I want to use it, I don't know. I want to touch it, it's just like all that stuff. And it's like this idea that a, there's some simplicity, but there's still some complexity you want to show. There's still some complexity you want to uh, surface to the user, so they feel like they are in control. Uh, so it says, for any system, there's a certain amount of complexity which cannot be reduced. So it gets to a point where it's you, just making it simpler, you're actually making it more complex. Why? Because you're now you're starting to hide useful information or you're starting to hide because for, for the whole idea of, oh, let's keep it simple, man, just reduce things. Sorry, I, I don't know who that character is. <laughs> just an annoying designer. It just wants to uh, wants to keep everything very simple. Uh, sometimes that's me. But yeah, you will hear that, right? It's just like, hey, reduce stuff. Less is more. Less is more. But it gets to a point where it's like, yeah, it, no, less is not more. Actually, less is more complexity. Less is more uh, things that you're hiding, and then the user doesn't even know where to find them or how to how to do those things, or if they're even capable of doing those things. Uh, so there's some things that says like every process has its own complexity. Uh, uh, you have to keep it real when making products. Not everyone acts logically in real life. Okay, it's a lot of stuff, but at the end of the day, it's like a there's some complexity uh, here. For example, like like. Uh, anatomy of an AI system where there's all of this stuff happening to just like whenever you're asking a question to, to an AI to uh, there's actually this one is this is pretty outdated now uh, there's more happening now <laughs> but you can see all of this stuff wow you're not gonna put this in front of the user right in front of the user you're gonna put this little dude and the echo where you just talk and then it understands you right but even this thing, it gets frustrating because you don't know how to interact with it. You don't know what to ask it and if it's going to uh, do. You start learning how to interact with these things. You, you start learning that, oh, these questions, Echo's not good at these things or like Google Home, whatever you use, uh, Siri, for example. Siri is one of those examples like really bad, right? Where it's like, you just like, Alarm, 7 a.m. I'm pretty sure, <laughs> hopefully it doesn't do an alarm. But uh, you have to ask things like a robot because like you you know that it's, because there's all this complexity that is hidden. You don't know what buttons to push. So you start understanding it's like, there's some things that it will understand and some things that it will not. And we just like, I will just like keep hitting a roadblock. So this is a good example of like a trying to hide the complexity, but also just like uh, sometimes that that hiding that complexity is just like a, it, it actually brings more complexity to the user and just like uncertainty. I don't know what to do. Uh, so 
I was thinking of creating a creative menu. And before I, I, I get into it, I want to see if there's any questions. So I'm going to go in there. How do I do that? Oh, yeah. Here. Oh, please tell me I was sharing my presentation. You, you are not looking at my screen? What's going on? Were you not looking at my screen? Oh, dude. Entire screen. Yes. Share. Oh, man. Were you not? Customers also. I don't see Figma. Oh, dude. I, I cannot see it. Se ve todo bien. Okay. This thing. Sometimes happens, sometimes it doesn't happen. And since I'm just by myself, I don't know if, if it's happening or not. Sorry about that. But yeah, like I just wanted to know, guys, maybe get rid of the graphics, like help. Well, yeah, of course. I'm sorry. Thank you so much for, for being patient with me. It's just me in the production. <laughs> So I'm just like clicking on these things. I'm presenting, but I'm also uh, clicking on all the elements. So let me just uh, hide all the elements and I just hide the comments and all that stuff. Sorry about that. Oh, man, I wish I had help here. Uh, I, I actually don't know how to. There you go. Hey, there you go. This is more of an ASMR thing than, uh, than let's learn UX thing, <laughs> right? I'm... Uh, yeah, so uh, the law of complexity, it's, for example, um, let's talk about like uh, Photoshop, for example. Uh, Photoshop, like you enter Photoshop and if it's your first time, you're going to get overwhelmed by all the complexity, all the all the tools, all the stuff that is there. You don't know where to start, right? Uh, and because it's a, it's a tool that is designed for, now it's, it's, it's a tool that is just for pros. If you're not a pro, if you don't take a course, if you don't, uh, take some TikTok videos <laughs> to learn some stuff, you're going to be lost. You're not going to know where to to start because Photoshop is it. Photoshop could hide some of that complexity, but then like users will be like the users, the pro users will be like, dude, like don't hide complexity to me. I'm a pro. I know how to do it. I'm actually I'm, I'm actually proud. Uh, I take pride on me knowing how complex these things are. And I, I, I take pride of me knowing where the little menu to do this very specific thing is. So and Photoshop cannot go back and say, like, let's hide the complexity or hide some of these menus or make it, make it easier. No, no, no. Photoshop has to stay complex. Uh, and, and that's because just users have gotten used to that. Uh, but there's a... Uh, and, and, and also, at the end of the day, it is a pro tool. So you don't want to hide those things because you want the user to feel in control, the, the pro user to feel in control. But there's so, there are other tools that are out there that just like that hide a lot of that stuff. And it's actually, it's, they're not intended to be pro tools. So when they're not intended to be pro tools, uh, they hide a lot of the complexity and then they do a lot of stuff for you. So... But it gets to a point where you still have to put some tools. So let's try to do that and let's get into Figma, okay? So I'm going to hide myself. I'm going to put myself a little bit little. And let's go ahead and create a creative menu. So usually this is something that I that I that struggle with a lot, you know, where uh, I'm someone who works in uh, creating creative tools, tools for other creators, for other designers. And... Um, it's usually like, how do you make it easy for others to use? Uh, but also don't make it too easy because those who want a lot of control will just like, you're going to be like gone. You know, you're never going to get them to use your tool. So uh, let's say that, for example, you want a tool that, that's able to do uh, painting, uh, it's able to do uh, tools uh, like uh, uh, geometric uh, tools. Well, this is like Figma. Huh? And also, like, access the layers and maybe some text stuff. Now, here, I'm just putting icons, but uh, maybe I could just put a, a paint, for example. Suddenly, uh, uh, wow, that is a big uh, font. Huh? And maybe let's put enter. Yeah, there you go. And maybe not too bold. Let's go with semi-bold. So here, uh, I have a brush, maybe. Uh, maybe I have... Uh, rectangle. Now uh, let's add all of these and let's call them label. Uh, and let's 
add all of these and let's call them icon. I just, by the, by the way, just select all of them and then press Command R and I'm able to just uh, select all of this stuff. Now, now that I'm here, I'm going to start like uh, making these uh, container, container of their own. So uh, let me see, Are you, am I still sharing my screen? <laughs> I'm gonna be coming back just to see if I'm sharing my screen, okay? So I have this little dude and I have my icon. Uh, uh, let's, uh, let's do more labels. So let's put it over here, layers. Uh, let's put text and let's put more. We'll know, like, now, todo bien? Let's see? Oh, sorry. Uh, I may actually start creating some buttons. All these are going to be buttons, and I'm just putting them in Shift A. Shift A creates uh, this little, well, uh, uh, auto layout, right? Now, I have all of these guys, and I'm going to call them uh, button, okay? just for now. Now, the cool thing about this is that since I'm, I named them all the same, I think I can do this. Oh, dude, no, it didn't do anything. <laughs> I thought all of these will be uh, just like call the same and it will be able to select them. What am I doing wrong? Why is it not selecting them all? Maybe I have to put all of them inside a container and then now we'll select, no matching layers to select on page. Weird. Wait, all of these are called label. They're all inside a button. I don't know. Uh, button, well, doesn't matter. Let's just, uh, that is weird, right? It should select all of these. Why are you not selecting all of them? There are others here. I don't know if you can hear the, the dogs. <laughs> kind of annoying. <laughs> Just like the my new neighbors, apparently I have these dogs. Uh, so I have all of these guys. Let's go up, back up. Let's put them at 16 pixels. Uh, and let's center them. Uh, all of them should be centered like this. So now they are centered, the text is centered. And I'm going to put, a f uh, just like all of this, I'm going to put uh, auto uh, in there, like how they are uh, uh, put there, like uh, the, the pattern between them. Uh, automatic and now I'm going to make all of them I want it to be the same width right so uh, why because I want the the buttons to all have the same uh, uh, the, well the the same size and actually to do that uh, instead of hugging I need to do uh, fill the container right once the fill is a container the container all of them are the same size is 124.4 maybe not exactly what you want let's give them a little bit more spacing uh maybe 720 there you go and uh let's uh, put a little bit of padding around them well uh now it's uh they're getting together now they're too close let's uh let's let's actually put uh, a specific one let's put 24 around them so this should be hogging the contents and now let's see all of these have the same size. Let's do 120. Let's just put a fixed. I think uh, sometimes you just have to go with fixed. And then this thing is like this. And now let's try to do them all with uh, just add a little bit of padding. Right now it's a 16. I think it can be eight. Let's put uh, 12 pixels around them. Let's uh, give them all a fill. Maybe ooh, boop, 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 boop. let's keep it wide and see if uh, we add another fill in this little dude in the container of all of them. And that looks like crap, but don't worry, we can fix it. <laughs> that looks horrible. So I we have them like that, and I think uh, that is looking good. Let's uh, put 16 pixels around them. Uh, I think, I wish I could do multi-select, but it's not doing anything. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Please, someone tell me what I'm doing wrong. Why is it not multi-selecting all of these little dudes? They're all called button, they're all called icon, they're all in the same. What am I doing wrong? Come on, guys, help me out. Anyone there? The last part thing. I really honestly use phosphor icons. I think he's using, yeah, phosphor icons, they're the best. Add a frame around each and you can edit, drag to move. Add a frame around each. Well, there is a frame around each. There's already a frame around each. You mean like another frame here? 
Another frame here. That is a lot of frames. I don't need a frame there. I don't know. Something I'm, I'm still learning Figma apparently. Um, okay, so I, I was expecting this, like a plus multi select, and then it will select all of these. They're all called the same, they're all in the same place, and I'm going insane. Let me actually put it. Hold on. I need to solve this. What if I do this? Nope. It's, there's no matching stuff. What do you mean? What if I put another frame around them? No? Come on. What am I doing wrong? Like, seriously, sorry. Like, I. Wow. Okay. You can see me. Oh, dude, no, hold on. <laughs> Come on, see, I totally deleted it. <laughs> Please, someone tell me. It should be add to component, add a frame around these. Dude, I don't know. Okay, by the way, like, uh, I mean, they're not components yet, so I haven't been creating them as a component. Uh, but here's the thing. Now, we were talking about, let's go back to where we were talking, right? We're talking about Tensor style, which is the law of conservation of complexity. And I think this is, a great way to say a how do you conserve uh, complexity without uh, showing all of it. So, for example, I can imagine that like a inside the rectangle tool, you also have a triangle, you also have a, a shape one, and you also have one that is called a circle, right? Ooh, circle. No, not cyclic. Circle. There you go. Let's uh, let's see if uh, phosphor has this circle. There you go. Phosphor are the best shape. Maybe octagon. There you go. And triangle. Look at that. I love it. Love it. By the way, uh, this is just all I did was adding the phosphor icons library, and I'm able to do all this stuff. So uh, what I'm trying to say is that a hey, maybe. There is this uh, hidden complexity uh, inside this thing. You know, when you press rectangle, uh, it's going to all of these. I want it to be 16 pixels here. Why is it not? Oh, it should be hug. Yeah. And this should be. Oh, they're fixed. Oh, man. I'm sorry. I am just the worst. Fill the container. Let's make the container a little bit bigger. There you go. That's all I'm doing. Uh, and then, uh, so this thing, let's uh, actually put it uh, inverted. Let's uh, let's put it a little bit uh, darker. Then we can go super dark. Maybe uh, even put up like a color like this. Let's put a little bit like this. And then everything that is black, let's turn it white. So there you go. So now you activated this menu, right? And this is what I'm um, thinking that a hey, with this thing, like you can still keep uh, showing some complexity and hide some of it where just a rectangle tool, just a shape tool is not going to give you all the other tools that you might need as a designer to just like hey, fill your stuff. Like you need circles, you need triangles, you need lines. So in you, but you don't want to be filling up a massive menu, right? I think we're going to be doing a lot of this stuff in this this little uh, thingy. You don't want to be creating a huge menu with all these options, right? It's just, it's like it's going to it's insane. You're going to like, dude, like I don't need all these tools right away. Just like show me the most important stuff, and then I can like from there I can start discovering the complexity that is hidden behind. So this is uh, just a little, uh, oh man, I, I deleted this stuff. <laughs> Hold on, just shift A. And then do you know that here's what I'm doing. I'm pressing command option C and then pressing command option V and then it pastes the style. And that way I can just like uh, hug the contents and then put it right here. And that's it. Little example in which instead of trying to show all of this stuff, you just show it like this. A uh, little bit heighten the complexity. Okay, now let's go to the next law. Hopefully, it didn't get it wrong. Uh, the Tesla's law, 
the conservation of complexity. Uh, you want to reduce complexity, but it gets to a point where you cannot reduce it more. Uh, let's see if everyone's there. Oh, the icon's right. So Hicks Law, let's go around about it. Let's actually press play. Let's see if this thing works. I think uh, it should. But Hicks Law, it's all about the law of time, decisions and choices, which sounds, again, a little bit like, what? What are you talking about, Pablo? And the idea is that the time it takes to make a decision increases with the number of complexity of choices. It's not just the numbers, it's also Hicks Law talks about the uh, distance. It's, it's all about like how much time it takes you to make a decision or to find the thing that you wanted to find. It's a, uh, which like a, the closer a thing is, the is like the, the closer a button is, the easier it is to click it. The bigger the button is, the easier it is to click it too, right? It's all about like different things that make timing of how to click on a thing faster, which sounds very obvious, but sometimes we just uh, miss it. And, and these laws are there to remind us like how to decide in a, in a clear way. Uh, so how do you do this? You cut down on options. You break big tasks into smaller steps. You point out the best choices so you don't get overwhelmed. Like, like what are the like? You make them a little bit better, like a, easier to find, and just don't make things so simple that they don't make sense anymore. It, it's very related to the last law, where it you actually actually don't want to make it too, too simple because like what what is this? It, it's, then it, it becomes a little bit abstract, right? Uh, so. Now it's not going anywhere. Uh, something happened there. Uh, but let me actually show you this example. This is a good example and like a categories, right? Uh, uh, categories can be categorized in, and instead of trying to put all the soft categories right away, you actually create bigger categories. And then inside them, you hide, uh, well, you put other stuff. And it's pretty similar to what we're doing here. Uh, and yeah, that's one example, but really, uh, uh, Hicks law is, a. Uh, you know what? I was confusing Hicks law with Fitz law. So what I was saying before, <laughs> it was Fitz law. Hicks law is more about like the amount of choices that you have, how many choices you have. And if you have too many choices, then it's harder to select. You, you kind of get this, uh. Um, I don't know, um, selection paralysis. Is that how you say it? Choice paralysis? Where there's so many things you you don't know where what to click. So something that I really like is uh, when you create a form. It's a very typical thing that any designer will have to do sometime in their life. And actually, I already have an input here. So let's just actually use that input. Uh, and let's reduce the size of these little dudes. So I already have different things that you will potentially be asked in a form, right? Uh, it's like, hey, what is your email address? What is your use? What is the username that you want? Uh, let's put this one at 16 too. Oh, it's 18. Wait, how is it 18? Is this 16? Oh, 26. Duh. Sorry, I thought I had put 20, 16, but I put 26. There you go. So. Uh, Let's make them all 18, just so they're the same. And let's make this 16, sorry. There you go. So you will usually get stuff like this, right? Where like a, uh, let's get all of this inside a form. Uh, 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 choose the password. Do you love my, uh, send your contacts. And I'm pretty sure this is going to be a button and not a form. So, so now you get a form, boom, it looks like this. And all of this, uh, let's select them. And all of them, let's put them at eight pixels. There you go. And let's put them here. You know, now you get a form that looks like this. You're really proud of yourself because you made it. You made this thing even with a light gray here just to create a little bit of contrast, but I'm pretty sure that your growth manager uh, um, 
the, the people who are looking at the metrics, they might not be too happy. <laughs> Why? Because, uh, because this form might actually not convert really well because there's so many things. It's just like, ah, oh, dude, so many options, so many things that I need to fill. I'm, I'm already overwhelmed, right? And it's like, oh, another form that I have to do? Come on. Like, uh, this is totally a chill form, okay? It's a, to it's a totally, sorry, it's a totally chill form. Just like, hey, the more you, you're gonna put some illustrations and some stuff just to make it more chill, but users are, you cannot fool them. You, they see all this stuff and they're like, come on. <laughs> it's a lot of work. I, I have stuff to do, you know? So uh, one way that I see many do, it's like, let me put a fill and then so we can make it a little smaller like this. Look at that. Ooh, we didn't do this. Let me see. Fit. What's going on? Why is it not? Oh! <laughs> It's not selecting all of them. Why? What am I doing wrong? Uh, I'm getting really frustrated by this. I, I don't know why multi-select is not working for me. I'm doing something wrong. Uh, anyway, uh, let's talk about a progressive form. This is like a regular good old form, you know, that puts everything in this very nice and simple, uh, just like format. Let's actually put this as a button and let me actually put it in the middle and accept. Enter form. I was gonna put it. And let's put it here. You know, maybe with a different active. Uh, now let's remove this little dude and let's put an active. And this one, let's call it. Uh, uh, uh. Let's break it apart. Let's put it as white. No, dude, break it apart. I told you. No, what did I do? <laughs> I I hope all of you are not just like going away because of all my mistakes. There you go. Now we have a, a totally chill form. Look at that. Nice. But uh, something you can do is let's try to get these little guys over here. And, and actually, well, actually the whole thing. Let's put it like this. And now let's reduce all of this stuff. And now it does feel like a totally chill form. Hey, it's only one question. And maybe we tell you, it's actually going to be more questions, you know? And maybe we tell you all the way to the top, one of five, one of five questions. And for some reason, we're okay with this. It's the same thing, but when when we're presented, we're, we're presented stuff like this, we're like, hey, not so bad. It's, it's just one one question, right? Uh, it's not so bad. I can I can take this. So suddenly now it's this and uh, continue, right? Why? Because this is just one out of five questions. And now you go f through each question. And then the next one will say two of five questions, three of five questions. And this makes it where like, hey, I can focus on this thing. I can focus on the next thing. And I'm not just like seeing a lot of stuff happening at the same time. And I'm a user who has a lot of time, but I have time for one question. And then you continue, it's like, okay, I have time for another question. <laughs> and then suddenly you start seeing that here it says four or five is like, oh, I'm almost there. <laughs> so now it's, it's, it's this, uh, loss of version or this, uh, what do you call it? Like uh, um, sync cost fallacy, right? Where it's like, oh, already put so much effort, <laughs> might as well finish it, right? So uh, you get people to just like a, take it one at a time, focus on that one, and then easily get to the, to the last part. Versus this, where you're gonna say, Pablo, but this is the same. And it's actually easier because everything is here. Ah, for the user, eh, again, it, 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 it looks like it's more. So putting it like this, somehow it works. So, and that's uh, 
what I would call this law, the Higgs law, the law of time, decisions and choices, and the time it takes to make a decision increases with the number and complexity of choices. So if we reduce the number of complexity and choices, then it doesn't feel like hey, it's a lot of time, you know? Okay, let's go to the next one. And before we go to the next one, let me go if you have any questions. And ta da 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 I keep making these little mistakes and I'm glad to see that it happens to our science too. Yeah, of course. Dude, like, <laughs> and more where you are here, pressure to be talking about it. You're here like, ah. So, yeah, thank you for, uh, for saying that. Uh, someone, and by the way, this was Hector who says like, hey, thank you so much for showing how the science actually looks. Like, yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of... <laughs> It's kind of complex, right? Uh, it's, this stuff is, we all suffer from the same stuff. Uh, but let me see if there's any, anything. Oh, yeah, getting mixed up all the time is totally part of the job. This example is fair for prof, uh, progressive disclosure. Hey, yeah, thank you, Naveen. Uh, progressive disclosure always works. Yeah, for, for some reason, it's just like, or mind how it works, you know? Like it's, we don't want to, we want to take shortcuts. And we don't want to be wasting time. And our mind is like, just give me something else because, like, uh, I'm going to get out of here. But if it's just one question, eh, our mind is like, uh, might as well do it. It's okay. You can do this one. And then you, next one. Uh, <laughs> and then suddenly <laughs> your 10 questions say this, like, and now you feel like too much pressure. Whereas, like, well, now I have to finish it. <laughs> or, or mind works that way. So might as well. Uh, I don't know. You, you could say that a lot of this stuff is are dark, dark patterns. I don't think this one is, though. Uh, but yeah, is there a movement now to use Figma as a central tool for design as opposed to Adobe Suite? I think uh, uh, for uh, UX designers, UI designers, and this was, uh, um, hopefully I, I say your name correctly, uh, Chin Le or Chin Li. Um, is there a movement to start using Figma? Uh, well, in, in our little circle of UIX, UI designers, I think there is. And, and more like people who are working on product, uh, people, but, but I've seen it like uh, production teams. When I mean production, I mean like uh, teams that make videos or do, uh, do other stuff that is not UX, there's like graphics or social media stuff. They, they're using Figma because it's a, it's really use, easy to use it for collaborative uh, work, and it's it, it adapts. It just like reduces a lot of the complexity that other tools have. So I'm I've seen it used by other teams that are not just UX UI uh, stuff that that are more like production of content or production of just be, even videos, just like to do the. Uh, the storyboards of stuff. It's just like a really cool way to just like get people on board, you know, and more with FigJam because it, FigJam is a great example of reducing complexity, reduce, re, re, reducing choices for people who are potentially not as pro, but still want to, want to participate. You just give them the tools that they need. Uh, but Figma and FigJam in the background, they're the same. Like it's it's really just powered by the same technology. It's just that like it's a great way to just like show different tools for different purposes, right? So Adobe, Adobe, I still use Adobe. I use it for well, I use it for video, Adobe Premiere. I actually use it for audio too. I use uh, Adobe Audition a lot. I use uh, um, I mean, people are using After Effects for all the animation. Still the standard, I think. And for me, Adobe Premiere for video is just like also standard. And I've been moving into more AI tools for video tool, uh, for video production and for video uh, editing. Like tools like uh, Descript is amazing. It's just like, you can ask it like, edit this video, remove all the stuff that where <laughs> I went into a rabbit hole that was going nowhere. And I just ask it with AI, sorry. Uh, and it does it. And it removes all the words that, like, I, I don't know, all that, um, uh, um, and that are annoying. 
uh, in a video. So it removes all of that. So it just makes the video also better. So I, for me, it's, it's those kinds of tools are great, but I still use Premiere uh, for like the final editing of really cool videos. Uh, I also use Photoshop just for uh, anything that is photo related. And now with their AI tooling, holy crap, dude, it's just amazing. There's the AI stuff that uh, uh, for Photoshop is doing is, is, is top, top level. And just like for, uh, uh, I don't know, like I use it a lot for out painting where they, they call it uh, background, I don't know what they call it. Uh, where you crop and then you enlarge the photo, you make it and then it just with AI recreates the other part that is not there. <laughs> it's like beautiful. I, I love it. Um, the in painting stuff is not as great, but eh, sometimes it works. Um, anyway, what, what was the question? <laughs> what happens in a studio where you have a questionnaire with some 40 questions? Dude, that is, I had such a case and we tried to do a progress bar and each page was about 10 questions. Dude, that is one of those things that, I don't know, man. I, I would say 40 questions. I would have like said, guys, we have to, first of all, you have to allow people to save their progress. You cannot like a hey, 10 questions and then having that anxiety that if I, close this, all my progress is going to be gone. No, you have to save all of that progress. You have to let them know that at any moment they can close the window, at any moment they can uh, get away. And then you send them an email. You send them an email, it's like, hey, you're almost there, man. You already got 10 questions of the 40 questions. Come on, let's, let's, let's go. The next time they're going to be a breeze. So you allow them to save. You allow them to go back and, and just like a, those, you get to question 39 and then you realize like, hold on, this is kind of the same question that I had in the beginning. I want to go and review it because like now my 40 questions away, it's like three months. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure that by question 35, maybe your mindset is already different. So you want to allow people to go back and I don't know, like uh, just like edit uh, previous questions, right? and undo the certain answers because <laughs> by question 35, you're a different person already. <laughs> hmm. So you wanted to save their progress. You want to group them also. And, and it seems like you did, like you did in, in pages, 10 pages, 10 questions per page. I would still think that it's a lot. So I don't know. Um, I mean, I will go and say like, do we really need 40 questions? <laughs> You know, it's like, come on, let's let's reduce it to 32. Come on, just 32. It sounds nice. 32, 23. Michael Jordan, Michael Jordan's number. Let's, let's, let's reduce it. <laughs> or something where it's like, hopefully those 40 questions, you, it wasn't like you cannot use the app until you answer the 40 questions because I will kill you. <laughs> Whoever was the chance was like, I need to kill this person. You have to also allow people to, enter and start uh, using a tool or something which is the most important questions and then you progressively inside the app you start prompting prompting them prom, prompting prompting oh my god uh, prompting them to answer all the other questions you know and and those questions maybe they appear uh, in context you know do you really need to Maybe uh, question 35 is about uh, something about, uh, I don't know, your gender or something about like a specific tooling that is very specific and very niche. Like don't ask it there. Maybe you ask it when it's needed, when in the context, when using the app, suddenly you got to that point where it's needed to know if you like A or B, you know? But I didn't need to, need, I, I didn't need to know that in the beginning only until the person start clicking things and got to that part where you need to answer A or B, you know? So maybe those questions should have been asked. Some of those questions can be asked inside the product when it's being used in context. Um, 
what else? I don't know, man. 40 questions sounds like a crazy, crazy thing, but I'm, I'm pretty sure if it's a government thing, that's the, that's the worst. Like those things you have to do it. So I'm not saying in general, you really can work to find a moment when it's really necessary to use your advance. Yeah. 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 Need to get my hands on that Figma file. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. We're going to, we're going to release it. It's, it's really cool. We, we have to rename all of our layers because there's a lot of Frame 2035. It's like, I, I don't like that. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's go back. It seems like we're all here. Thank you so much for your questions. You are very, uh, um, I, I love, I love these questions. I love that we are going through this. So let's talk about Jacob's Law, the law of similarity. Uh, look at these little dudes. By the way, these photos, I'm going to do uh, a, a special uh, kind of uh, 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 advertisement. I don't know if you saw this, but I just clicked here, plugin, open Lumi, and then it opens that image here because that's the uh, in, inside this plugin. It already opened it. And then from here, if I want to be like, oh, actually, I don't like that anymore. It shows me similar photos right away. Oh yeah, this is better. Similarity, boom, baby. Just like that. So all of these photos is this thing called Lumi. It's an app that we built. And it's really, it's an app for like stock photo and, and, and stuff like that. But thought for me as a designer, this is the tool that I want. <laughs> you know, I, it's really cool to be able to just like a hey, uh, duplicate this little dude. And ooh, no, hold on. Duplicate this dude, select it, and know that there's going to be other related photos right away, you know, easily. You know, so I, I don't know. Like, I, I recommend it, uh, obviously, because we made it, and a lot of these photos are mine. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but yeah, like a, a, just a little commercial. Uh, but let's continue. So Jacob's Law, users spend most of their time on other sites, <laughs> which is good. Yeah, that's true. This means that users prefer your site to work the same way as all the other sites they already know. So this is about familiarity. This is about like a don't, uh, I already know how the internet works. I don't already know where to find the switch. Usually this is something that all actually happens in hotels. You go to a hotel and the first thing that you want to do is turn on the lights, right? And you have an expectation of where the switch to turn on the lights is going to be because in that expectation can be tied to your home, how, how it is in your home, you know? In your home, you open the door and where are the lights? Or maybe you don't even have that. You have a thing that says like, Hey, Google, do this thing, open the, turn on the lights, you know? So uh, you, you want that expectation. And then hotel is like, you, you expect it to be close to the door, somewhere there so you can quickly turn on the lights. I've been in hotels where the, the lights are, the, the switch is just like somewhere really inside. And it's like, dude, I, I want to turn it right away. So, uh, and I'm, I'm giving you this example, but this applies also to UI, to UX. Usually people, like, they are in other sites, and these sites are a, uh, the kings of the internet, <laughs> the kings and queens. Uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, Pinterest, all of those, Airbnb, and all of those already have some standard ways of working, of how they put their menus and how they uh, present uh, their options and how they present uh, different interactions. And then suddenly, since people um, spend most of the time there, you want your site to be a little bit similar. You want your site to use some of the patterns that they use too, or some of the patterns that have been established. So whenever someone visits your site, don't get lost. Whenever someone visits your hotel, they know how to turn on the lights. <laughs> so uh, these are some rules. People usually expect a new thing to be like something they already know, like I was saying. And, and this <laughs> sometimes it's just like something that you built, you know. Stick to what people are used to. And when making changes, let folks keep using what they know for a bit to avoid causing confusion. That's true. Like something 
uh, maybe users get used to how you already did it, you know, and maybe you have users who have been using your, uh, your app or your tool for months or for years. So now they, they're in the flow, they go to your site and they know where to find stuff. And then if you suddenly, oh, let's do a redesign, man, let's do a rebranding, come on. <laughs> Which is cool. It's a, it's a fun exercise. It's your redesign. But don't do a redesign without, <laughs> without doing some research, without asking, and without realizing if this actually improves a uh, user's uh, uh, experience. Like, I feel like uh, some tools like, didn't never change uh, and, and were, were, looked like they were designed in the 90s still like Reddit, uh, only until recently they totally redesigned it the home page at least and for me i would be like to be honest i'm, I'm such a such an old man that i'm like ah oh, no give me the, give me how it was you know it was ugly but i got used to it so i knew how to use it so now suddenly you changed it and i don't know how where to click and i don't know what all this stuff is so you have to also this is very important when you make changes let folks keep using what they know in reddit actually did that where they have a button that says like use classic mode or something like this or the legacy mode and they allow you to keep using how it used to be you know because there's people like me who are like ah grumpy old man who just like ah in my time anyway uh for example here's an example and this was done by the together team thank you so much guys uh and this is an example of a navigation bar. The one at the top, you never expect to see a navigation like this, right? Usually you see it like the one on the bottom where the logo is on the left. Uh, this is the logo. And then the options are here. And maybe the most important thing or the next or the stuff that you want to find quickly is going to be on the top right. Right, because uh, or the login, the sign up, the cart, the uh, the click here. Uh, uh, I don't know. Try for free. All that stuff is going to be here. So now people are used to seeing stuff like that. So if you suddenly put it in the left, they're never going to log into your site. They're going to be like, ah, what is this? <laughs> so that's a good example. Uh, but let's do. Uh, uh, I was going to do a payment form. I think we're over time already, so uh, maybe we do it another time. Let's 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 actually go to the next law, which I think I was actually confused in if Hicks law with Fitz law. So <laughs> I'm an old man. Come on. So Fitz law is one of my favorite ones, and it's the law of distance and size. And that's what I was telling you before, where the time to acquire a target to click on the button to get it. To it all depends on how far it is, the distance, and also how big it is. So a target, like let's say that you want to, well, you, you have one of these things, what do you call them? Um, uh, <laughs> like an arc and a bow. Oh, by the way, I still had this, I'm sorry. Uh, and <laughs> well, the closer it is to you and the bigger it is, well, <laughs> the easier is going to get that target, right? It's, it's just as easy as that. The same applies to UI. So let's uh, see it. Uh, for example, uh, well, here it says like, hey, buttons and stuff, you top should be big enough to hit them right. To hit them right. Sounds uh, like a song. And stick those uh, uh, tap things in spot. Oh my God. Give some breathe room. Yeah, that's really important too. So let's let's take a look at this. And let's take a, a, a same example as before. You can see that here, uh, number one, we put this a little bit bigger. Uh, well, this these buttons are a little bit bigger. And actually, you sometimes you even want to, like one of the buttons, you want to make it even bigger, you know, just like, hey, make it bigger, make it chunkier. That's that's how, what I say, make it chunkier. And that way, the target to get in is just like <laughs> easier to click. It, it maybe got a little bit too chunky. <laughs> but uh, uh, let's remove this. Uh, but you get what I'm saying. And also, just like, hey, for example, these, these guys, imagine if they were like this. 
you, you you wouldn't even know which link is which. You know, it's just like it's it, it feels like this is one single thing when actually it's different links, right? So you want to also just like separate them enough, just like give them enough room to say like, oh, okay, this is one and then this is another one. So there's there's even just like a click zone around it and there's enough click zone around this one too. So you can hover and click it. And then this one, anyway, you get the idea. It's uh, easier to find. Also, by the way, something that is not mentioned here, but like uh, uh, the corners, are preferred to put important actions because also in the corners you it's actually easy to just like get to a corner because once you get to a, like like you cannot go past it you know like if you get to the corner of the screen then you cannot your mouse cannot go past it it just like stays there so fitzla also tells us that a it's also easier to find that by the way something happened yeah it's easier to find that uh, that button and click it when it's in a place where, like, you get cornered. <laughs> so uh, corners are good for uh, important actions, and not corner, not also, not just corners, but edges. So, for example, let's say that you had let's 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 go with these little dudes, okay, and let's put them here. No, not there. Let's put them here. So uh, let's uh, put a uh, fill around them. Let's put some spacing. There you go. And let's put um, uh, more. Let's put more. So now here, there's a lot of options. Which you would say, like, hey, Pablo, it's sort of like a lot of options. You shouldn't do it that, that way. You will be right. You will be totally right. But I had log complexity also told me that I needed to show all these options. They are all important, and I cannot reduce the complexity of this. Well, which ones are the uh, the ones that are more important? Uh, well, uh, let's say that uh, uh, login is a really important one, and also home. You know, so instead of putting them in the middle where it's hard to, because like they kind of like get squashed with all these, you put them on the edges. Now it's easier to get to home. And if you put login all the way here, it's also easier to click on this one. Why? Because there's not another option here. There's just this one. And here, the same. There's not another option here. So it's like it's easier to get to the edge. So I would say always try to put the most important stuff on the edges. And then, well, the stuff that is not as important inside. Uh, it's like the, the breadth of the sandwich. The breads of the sandwich are really important. It's easier to get. The tomato, ah, you, see, you have to get in there yeah, to get the tomato and to get the vegan ham. <laughs> the vegan ham. Uh, so, so yeah. For example, this, this is also a, a, a really nice example. Here, Higgs Law, uh, hey, maybe we make them all big, you know? Hey, it's not big, it's big enough. And Oh, this is just like fixed. There you go. Okay, so big enough, but, and, and they're on the edge, but there's not enough space in between them. I feel like if I'm accidentally, I can really easily tap the heart when I meant to tap the cart, you know, because I have fat fingers. So what do you do? You increase the space in between them or not even the spacing. Uh, I, I don't think this is the right approach. I mean, yeah, the spacing, but also you want to add, uh, just to all of these, you want to add also some spacing within them. So you want all of these little dudes to also have a little bit of spacing around them. So 24, let's say. So then some, or no, let's, uh, let's go with uh, 16. There you go. So now the buttons are easier to tap. There's all the space around them, you know, that you can tap and if you have fat fingers like me, you will still hit it. So you have enough spacing around them. Let's put, actually, let's go to 12. So there's this space that is empty, but also really quickly you get to the heart. So even if you have fat fingers and you click here, like right here, you will still tap the heart. Why? Because it's easier, it has a bigger surface, and it's also, well, it's easier to tap because it's close to your fingers, because your fat finger is going to be around here like this. This is my fat finger, okay? 
don't laugh at it. And yeah, so my fat finger is really close to this. So you want it to be close to your fat finger. And you also want it to have enough space so your fat finger clicks it. Take a screenshot of that. Come on. That's uh, because like, oh, this guy, this guy, it's not, no, 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 no. This thing is going to be shift B. No. <laughs> I didn't mean that. No. <laughs> Oh man, look how I do. I do this. I do. I do. Oh no. There you go. Oh, look. It's actually even looking at it. It's like happy. Like, look at that. That is so nice. <laughs> okay, that's Fitz Law for you, my friends. Hey, let's repeat. The time to acquire a target is a function of the distance. How far away is that thing? and also the size of the target. But it also talks about other stuff, which is like a having breathing room between the top targets. And also uh, stick those tap things in spots where you can grab them without a hassle. And that's like usually corners, things that like, it's harder for you to miss a target, okay? Oh man, I think we're over time. But let's see what example we had here. Let's go, let's go really quickly. Bustle's law, the law of robustness principle. And this is uh, about like a, it, this is a, a, a mouth word. <laughs> it's a, a word mouth, mark word. Yeah, uh, I don't know. Be liberal in what you accept and conservative in what you send. This sounds like a, daily quotes for you to be inspired and it's a little bit like that and it's about like a accept stuff that the user gives you and be uh don't put a lot of uh rules uh and be conservative in what you send and what you tell them be conservative in not giving them too inf too much information uh, things that are going to overwhelm them so be okay with all the input Accept it. Whatever. And if there's something that they, they should have not clicked, tell them. You should have not clicked that, but I allowed you to click it because you have the freedom to, because I accept. I'm liberal in what you do. You know, I can accept all those things. Even when the button shouldn't be clicked, allow them to click it and then tell them, hey, you know what? It was actually, eh, it was an error. <laughs> Don't tell them there was an error right away. Only tell them if they make the error. Don't tell them. I, I hate those forms when the forms are quickly telling you that there's a mistake and I haven't even started. You haven't put your name. Yeah, I haven't started. Don't don't tell me that I haven't put my name. I haven't even started. You know. So be conservative in what you tell the user. Don't don't right away tell them that there's an error because like, yeah. So there was a um, uh, for example here. Like a, a where's the bathroom? Like a you are really liberal, like a search form, for example, and what you accept the user to tell you, and then you make suggestions, you know, and then you are uh, you're not going to tell them you're not going to talk about the kitchen here. You're going to talk about the bathroom. They're they are asking about that, and I'm going to give them some information about that. So you're very liberal with just the text input and what you what they can tell you, and um, conservative in what you output. That's it. It's a good example. And now with text inputs, they're becoming the design tool. They're becoming our most creative tool. Just a text input that allows you to do anything. Just type it. Just like say, AI, hey, little robots, do this for me. And you can do it. And it's, it's, it's the best example of how liberal you can be with what users give you. And this one, for example, this one here, it's, it's an example of like, hey, this is necessary but like a password strength, you know, where like a, uh, there's a, uh, you're very strict about the things that you need from the user. And this is one of those times when you have to be like that, but you also have to communicate really well. What are the things? And by the way, <laughs> I love, I always make this mistake. Uh, but yeah, and you tell them what you need, you know what? Because is there, for the safety, for the security, but you can still say like, hey, come on, be a little bit more liberal sometimes. I hate it when it's like, oh, but you had to, you cannot do a one to three or you cannot do, a, it has to be a capital and, a, and, and two capitals at least. And it's, not, it's like, come on, 
it doesn't have to be that strong. <laughs> and bond reserve effect. This is a good one. And it's, and it's also because it sounds very, uh, I don't know, aristocratic, the bond reserve effect, you know? So, <laughs> so I like it because of that too. And the bond reserve effect, uh, which is the isolation effect, it talks about when multiple similar objects are present, the one that differs from the rest is more likely to be remembered. And this is just like a one, yeah, the things that are a little bit different, they, they catch your attention, you know? They, they catch your attention and you, you, you what is that, you know? And sometimes you actually want them, you want people to do that. For example, let's say you have a, like a, like a pricing plan, you know, and you're presenting the pricing plans, but you want, uh, you want to tell people which one is the one that you recommend, you know? This can get into dark patterns sometimes, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to still go with this example. But how do you do that? Like, they look very similar, right? What is changing is the price, and then these features that I'm not going to read. <laughs> I just want what is going on. So one way to do this is like, hey, let's duplicate this little dude and actually delete this guy. And I mean, one way that you can do this is just like, come on, I guess just give it a little bit more padding on the top, you know? And suddenly it's a little bit bigger, maybe a little bit more padding here. Uh, and then maybe the stroke is a little bit thicker. It's a little bit subtle, but A, this one is, a little, it's, it's, it's grabbing my attention. I, I want to know more. And also something that you want to do, maybe you want to also uh, make the other ones not stand out as much. So, for example, these ones, I will change the fill to be white, and then I will change the text to be black. You know, and then suddenly, uh, uh, this button uh, looks more enticing, right? So, hey, you are telling people this is the one. You know, now if you want to go really extreme, then you can just like uh, go ahead and select all of these little dudes, uh, and actually just invert it. Let's see if we can invert it quickly. Uh, pretty sure I'm not going to be able to do it, but let's go with uh, let's go with black. Boom, baby. Oh, it didn't do shit. Sorry. <laughs> it didn't do anything. Uh, let's, there you go. Uh, <laughs> sorry about that. My friends, I love you. So there you go. Now it's very, <laughs> it's like, ah, click on me. I'm the most recommended. And maybe you can even put one of these uh, little dudes. Let me actually put it here. And... Uh, you can do something like this, and then you fill it with a really popping color. and say most popular. And not only that, but you put it in an absolute position over here on the top right, right? And you put it like this. This is the most popular. It's even just like, look at this. I, I maybe even the price is yellow. Wow, we're, 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 we're designers. This is what we do. This is what we do. <laughs> Is this yellow? I don't know. There you go. So look at that. So much attention being uh, grabbed by this, this little dude. Oh, let's make it red. Come on. Oh, come on. Click it. Click it down. That's what's happening. So this is <laughs> the bond reserve effect, the isolation effect. Suddenly, this thing is... It's standing out as being isolated and it's caught grabbing your attention because it's different from the others. Uh, let's do a quick example here, for example. A quick example, for example. Oh my God. Let's say that you have multiple icons. Let's, let's go back to that, uh, uh, that uh, example, very similar to what we had before, right? Where you have a lot of icons, different actions. They'll look very, uh, well, they'll look similar. I don't know. So let's uh, put a shift A, shift A, shift A, shift A, and shift A. All of them are little buttons, and it does not allow me to select stuff. Yo, I'm not selecting you. I'm selecting stuff inside. Hi, Diosito. What is going on? No, dude. Like, unselect stuff. There you go. And sorry about this. Why are you doing this to me? Why? Why would you do that to me? 
There you go. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know what's happening with that frame. It's not allowing me to uh, select stuff inside it. I was doing something wrong, I'm sure. Anyway, let's uh, let's go back to our little buttons. We have our little buttons here, and but this. Mm, mm, mm. Okay, select them, and then all inside them. Let's put another Shift A. Let's add a little bit of padding, maybe 12 pixels. Oh my God! And let's. That's it. Okay. Why is it not? Oh, Shift A, Shift A, Shift A, Shift A, Shift A. There you go. <laughs> So a little fill. Let's make make them a little bit grayish, a little bit around the corners. Look at that. So beautiful, so pretty. Let's put them at 16 pixels between them. Look at our menu. It's really nice. Now, you want one of these little dudes to stand out. Maybe you want this one to stand out. So what do you do? You change the color, my friend. It's easy as that. You make it I don't know, maybe you make it a, a little bit, this is a primary button now. And this one will stand out and it will be like a, is it, well, now now I see that like it's active, you know. By by being this color, it's active and it's telling me like, hey, this is turned on. Or it could be that it's like, hey, we put it right here, maybe it will not feel like that. Feel. I think that it's all about the colors. The color like has to be more of a neutral color before it's active. And here is more telling me like, hey, this is important. So, hey, just little things that like, hey, uh, if you make something stand out by different with different reasons or different things that you can do to the design, uh, adding contrast to the background, adding uh, different color, uh, making it bigger. So playing with the scale too but keep it in the center. Like that would also like help. Uh, look kind of look kind of ugly. You, you don't want to go too, <laughs> too far into it because then suddenly you create something that eh, doesn't look that well. But this was a good example too, right? Where a, you apply the bond raster effect when you isolate something. It's like we went from this that looked all the same. I was like, oh, I don't know what to choose. And then we're like, choose this, choose me, pro plan. Yeah, it starts sounding like something like a radio commercial. Uh, okay, my friends, let's see, let's see what you're all doing. Although it's super interesting to see us just finding their way. I think innovation needs to have a purpose. Uh, why to do it and not innovate per innovate? Uh, but yeah, 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 yeah. I think uh Innovation has, well, isn't the greater cause the uh, that we humans need to evolve and get better? Isn't that enough cause sometimes to innovate? Maybe not, because like then suddenly we get to technologies that are just like close to destroying us. So maybe not. <laughs> so I get your point, Mariana. Like uh, it's it's almost like. Uh, like when in Jurassic Park, when Goldblum says, like, what does he say? He says, uh, the question was not if you could do it, but why? <laughs> why would you do it? Uh, was it like that? Maybe I, I got it wrong. So thank you, team. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Thank you for just being patient with all this stuff. Hopefully this is uh, something that is useful. It's just like, hey, we went through Figma. We're gonna put this presentation out there so you can see it. We're gonna clean it up a little bit though. <laughs> but so you can just see some examples. Maybe you can use it as a presentation. You can present it to your team, you know? Um, you edit it, you put your logo, and then suddenly now it's uh, for your team and for your design team, or maybe in, uh, people in product, maybe for engineers. You designers want to show some of this stuff so you're, your, the rest of your team are aware of these things, you know? And if the rest of your team are aware of these things, then design the, the stuff that you that you know that is important, it's important for them too, and they understand why. So, yeah, I, I think, uh, and also the better way to learn something, the, the hack to learning really something 
is by teaching it. So if you go out there and you teach this thing to your fellow workers or I don't know, your design community, wherever you are, I don't know, like then suddenly it gets stuck here. Thank you so much for being here. It's, uh, it's an honor to be working with other designers like you and to be doing this stuff. And go check out Lumi. <laughs> Again, <laughs> gonna do the, the commercial. Go check out Lumi. We've been working on it and it's, and it's amazing. Uh, going to share my screen again, uh, just so you see it. Look at all these photos, my friends. All these photos are there for you to use. And then also you can get this color palette and all this stuff is also on Figma, by the way. Uh, and now you can just like a little things that we are doing, you know, where uh, a, you can search by tags. You can also filter by color. So we have some colors here, but at a, you can also say like, hey, just give me red photos, dude. Just photos that are like on the reddish. Um, let's see if we could do something on the bluish, around this. Hey, it's not doing anything. Oh, it, se it seems like uh, <laughs> there weren't a lot of photos <laughs> with that uh, color. There you go. I think uh, with yellowish, we're getting, no. We searched high and low, but came up empty-handed. Oh, it seems like uh, some of the colors are not working. Uh, let's go with portrait, just so you see. By the way, something that we're doing, and here you're going to see what we're doing in the back. Number of people, too. Yeah, this is something that we're adding, and they're also adding focal points. Oh, actually, I didn't add this. So you're going to say, why do I need focal points, Pablo? What is interesting about this? Focal points is going to allow us later to insert images into any rectangle, whatever the shape of your rectangle, and allowing the focal point to be in the rectangle. So if you have a rectangle like this, that is this size, it doesn't get, the eyes, the face doesn't get cropped, you know? Like, hey, we move the image to adjust to your rectangle actually boom we're working on that that's still not out there uh but it's uh, something where we have to man we tried to do this with uh with ai and it did some of the work but it didn't do it that correct so now we're manually adding a focal point uh but but yeah all of this stuff is uh i don't know oh, oh yeah portrait let's filter by color let's filter by this color da, 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 da. Damn, let's, let's filter by this orangey or green. What is that? Uh, okay. Come on, let's go with red, like bright red. Give me something. Damn, dude, look at that. Ah. Oh. Portrait will get you a lot of photos. Why? Because I, <laughs> we made a lot of portraits. I don't know, I love portraits. Uh, look at that. Damn, dude. And also you can say like, dude, yeah, but I only want horizontal stuff. Boom. Okay, enough with the commercial. I just wanted to show you that because that's, uh, that's something that I use all the time and, and I think it's gonna, and we're going to add illustrations too now to it. We're going to add, oh, oof. I'm excited. Uh, thank you so much for being here. Uh, I'll see you on the next one. Every Thursday we get together, we do something. Sometimes it's a, it's a talk, sometimes it's a, just like a jam like this one, and see you around, okay? From the Together team and myself, Pablo Stanley, adiosito, bye.